from high above the Pacific Ocean, just north of Florence, Oregon, we are going to check out what promises to be a classic tacky tourist trap. Let's go check this out. Welcome to Sea Lion Caves. Now this has got all the hallmarks of a classic tourist trap from like the 50s and the 60s. Billboards up and down the highway in both directions and really mixed reviews on TripAdvisor. Which means you got to come into this place with the right mindset, which is I, what I think we have. Hoping it's tacky and kitschy. I hope we actually get to see sea lions because apparently this is not the best time of year to see them. But we'll see what we see. See what we see in terms of sea, sea lions, lions by the sea. Yes, I hope they're not lying to us. Oh. <laughs> For your enjoyment, we suggest jackets, shoes, binoculars, camera, and not getting flattened trying to cross Highway 101 on a blind corner. Okay, crossing the highway was fun. It was a lot of, yeah, nope, whoa, yep, yeah, nope. Wait, nope, go. It's, <laughs> it's real life Frogger. Fun. Hi, John, how are you? Uh, we are on the Oregon coast right now. And then uh, by the end of December, the cave is full through. Yeah. Yeah. January, February, March. In uh, May, they start moving out of the cave and out under the rookeries where they get birth and do their breeding. On the rocks. Yeah. Good fun. <laughs> yeah. So they were very upfront with us that we're here at the wrong time of the year to actually see any sea lions. So we know what we're going to expect here. And we're doing that purely because we, A, want to see the caves, and B, because we're already here and, you know, that's the kind of thing we do for you. Cormorants are like, hey, predators are gone. <laughs> One just tumbled uh -huh. off. Oh my god. It just went bleh. There's a bunch of them down there. Oh yeah? About a dozen or so on the rocks. It comes up. Yes, we did. To save you a little bit of reading, essentially, Captain William Cox discovered this cave in the summer of 1880. Now in 1927, a fella named R.E. Clanton purchased the land with the intent of opening the caves as a business. It wasn't until the 1930s when Route 101 was being planned and built that it really became a profitable idea and he got a couple of partners named Houghton and Jacobson together to open the business. It was not an easy proposition by any stretch of the imagination. The newly constructed Highway 101 was still just a gravel road, and many of the bridges were not in place yet and were still ferry crossings, so access was not easy. Access to the cave was even more of a challenge. They had to excavate by hand a 1,500-foot path into the face of the cliff and then construct a 135-step wooden tower down to the north entrance of the caves so people could actually access the caves. 
All that was uh, completed, and the Sea Lion Caves opened to the public for the first time in August of 1932. Clanton himself would withdraw from the partnership in 1934, and R.A. Saubert, or Saubert, I guess, depending on if you want to go English or French, became part owner. Those three families, the Sobert, the Houghton, and the Jacobson families, would actually operate the caves until 2006, when Sobert and Jacobson then took over full partnership. And so when I call this a throwback tourist trap, I actually really mean that in a loving way. Like, this is the sort of place that we dream about finding. You're talking about a thing that extends back to the Depression era of the 30s, family owned and operated. Really, when you look at the old photos, not all that much has changed. This place is fantastic. One thing that has changed over the years was the wooden tower with the steps was replaced in 1961 with an actual elevator. There is a layer of water on these stairs that make them quite a challenge to navigate safely using the handrail. One last look at the caves before we head back to the surface. So we got to see sea lions on the outside, none in the cave as advertised, but you know what? Still a fun little stop. You know, there's a historical perspective to it, having originally been opened back in the 30s. Still got to see some sea lions, some great ocean views. And check this out. The free bumper stickers. Yeah. How's that for a throwback? <laughs> And an added bonus, uh, since they can't guarantee the sea lions and they give you the $2 off, they also give you a rain check, which is good for one year on a return trip. You can get in for free if you keep your receipt. So, you know what? All in all, not that bad of a deal. That's going to do it for now. So, oh, we're not going to see sea, sea lions. See, see, sea lions. But they didn't lie. There was no lying involved.